Daniel T, welcome to the Business Advisory Show. Thanks for coming on. How Thanks, are you? Mate. Good, how are you? Very well, yeah. And so what, uh, what an amazing year or two that I've noticed from the yeah. outside looking into BGL. Um, what is, firstly, Business Advisory, what does it mean to you and to BGL? So for us, Business Advisory, obviously we're not actively involved in Business Advisory, but our, our software enables Business Advisory. So what does it mean for us from a software perspective? is being able to take what were traditional practices, try to automate those practices, and then in a sense try to move to an environment where you're focusing less on the compliance function and more on the reporting and the data so that the, the, the information that's coming out of our products allows you to have better conversations with your clients. So really it's about um, focusing less on you know, all that manual data entry, all that type of stuff that traditionally used to happen and now moving to an automated space so that you're dealing with data and information rather than the day-to-day -day hack work or compliance. Yeah, fantastic. And there's been some enormous development on the tech side with your business. Do you mind, because for some people, that for, if for some strange reason they don't quite understand that, do you mind sharing a few updates? Yeah, look, we've, we've gone on a, a pretty long journey and it's uh, started in 2014 when we released Simple Fund 360. Um, and effectively what we've tried to look at is in both corporate compliance and SMSF, there's obvious pain points. So what we've tried to do is use technology to address those pain points. So with Simple Fund 360, we know a big part of it is data entry. We know a lot of it is around, you know, getting the reports to a point where you can deliver them to your clients quite easily and, that, and it's meaningful to them so that they can make sense of it. So what we've done with the data entry side of it is we, we automate a lot of the process. We bring in things like bank data, we bring in wrap data, we bring in contract notes, we bring in registry data. We bring in a whole heap of data that we're able to take, bring together and then pretty much process. But really, the really exciting stuff that we've done with Simple Fund 360 is in the AI space. We were able to take things like CSV files and we we're able to take just basic transaction files, which has just got, for example, a date, a reference, an amount, a description. And based on that information, we we're able to run that through our system and with a pretty high level of confidence predict exactly where transactions should end up. So users don't actually need to know the structure of the chart of account for the system to auto code because it's auto processing. And then with the CAS360 side of it, we know that many accounts were using things like, you know, either ASIC portal or they were using things like, um, they might have used CAS desktop or other systems to manage the whole ASIC compliance function. So we knew that they'd use things like calendar systems and messaging systems, all that type of stuff to remind themselves of reminders and the documents and the workflow. So what we did is we very cleverly designed the CAS360 system where you could basically manage the whole ASIC compliance off the one screen. So off the one screen, you've got alerts as to when annual reviews come through, you've got all your document management alerts, and you've also got all your ASIC data report alerts. And generating changes is really simple. It's just a matter of creating the change within the system, and then the system produces the forms, all the supporting documentation within a couple of mouse clicks, it's all delivered to your clients. So really taking the pain points, working out how to best address them, and then giving them to the clients, and then that whole process of continual feedback allows us to better improve that process. Yeah, and I understand that the client feedback's been pretty, pretty fantastic around that central dashboard as well. Yes. Yeah, correct. And look, the thing is, like, I'll give you a great example, Kev. When we used to, for example, those running traditional SMSF products, like our desktop product, if they had to find out, for example, today exactly where a minimum pension was at. It was a whole process of going through each and every individual fund, try and work out what was processed, try to work out where their pension was at, and then get back to the client. And once you'd work through it all, Simple Fund 360, it's literally go into Analytical Insights, select the year, minimum pension not met, and they've got the data at their fingertips. But obviously that's, that's required some changes in processing moving from the traditional end of year historical to day-to-day -day processing where you're dealing with data as it comes in and ensuring that you've got up-to-date accounts and information. Yeah, absolutely. Now, on to the, the topic of people in business. Yep. Uh, I believe you guys, uh, as a company, have really done a great job with your leadership and your people and culture. Yep. Uh, do you mind sharing a bit about that? Yeah, look, one of the things about culture is that it's an ongoing process and it's hard work. So culture is not something that you set and forget. It's something that you've got to work on day to day. And it all stems from your language, your actions, your interactions, the way that you put yourself out to clients, the way that you put yourself out to, to the industry. It's, it's an accumulation of things. But we've got some very strong values which we live out every day. And one of the big ones is integrity. 
um, things like trust. Like we don't talk about what we haven't got. We don't talk about who we are. We only talk about what we've got and what we can deliver to clients. And we make sure that each one of our conversations are absolutely honest. The other thing that with people, I suppose, and I shared a little bit about this at RegTech, one of the great things that we have with people is a belief in people. So we've got an amazing group of people, like people like Matt who've been there 20 years, Jeevan 12, 13 years, Anthony Costa now 12 years, so many that have been there the eight and 10 years plus. And one of the great things that we're able to do is not only identify the talent, but um, invest in the talent and then release the talent. So there's no point in identifying and then investing and then not letting them do what they do best. You've got to release them to do what's best, but it's an ongoing process. It's an intentional process, and you can't leave it to chance. Yeah. When you say release, you're, you're not just talking about churning and letting go of people. You're talking about actually empowering them to, to really thrive in your business. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, the ability to make decisions, to make the right calls when they need to make, uh, to make the proper software decisions, whatever it may be, they're obviously great people who are aligned from a values perspective, and we know that whatever they do will never be outside of what we hold dear to us. So that's really important to us. Yeah. Um, as a leader of a significant business in the industry, what, what's been some of the most valuable lessons, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, that you look back on yourself? Look, there's, there's lots of things that, that and, and look, and I have the amazing privilege of working under Ron Lesh, um, who's been in it for 30 years and through ups and downs has gone from a DOS-based product to Windows to a cloud-based products. And I suppose one of the things that I've absolutely learnt is resilience. The, the ability to get back up when you get knocked back down. But the most important thing that I've learnt is integrity. And that, honestly, John, that, that underlies everything that we do is integrity, mm -hmm. right? And at the end of the day, we don't, like, we, we know we went through a bit of a rough patch 2014 with Simple Fund 360. And it wasn't that the product wasn't great, it was just that we didn't meet client expectations. So what we learned from that is only talk about what we've got talk about what might be coming within the next couple of releases. And I suppose the most powerful thing that we learnt out of that is that when you do stuff it up, just say sorry. Yeah, just acknowledge it. Just acknowledge yeah. it. And don't be afraid to admit your mistakes because you're so much more respected for it. Yeah, that's such a great point because yeah. you're just being honest and open. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, why do you think your organisation continues to attract talent? Look, by no means are we perfect. Yeah, so, it's, so BGL is a work in progress and it will always be. Um, but the reason we're able to do it is because we've got a product that people believe in. And as I say to people, BGL, yes, we produce great software, but that's an extension of what we do. It's not who we are. We're, a, we're an organisation that prides itself in service and provides, uh, prov um, prides itself in customer experience, prides itself in doing what it says it will do. So when you're dealing with BGL, the product is just what we do, which is... I mean, we happen to do SMSF and corporate compliance well. It's more the experience you get, the people that you engage with, and people believe and buy into the journey, and we let them be part of it. Yeah, I think it's got a lot to do, uh, to the credit of Ron and yourself, that you actually are investing in creating a culture, not just expecting people to show up. No, absolutely not. And um, what's the point of people showing up if they can't be free to do what they do best? So. We love our people, we invest in our people, we give people opportunities to grow. So one of the great things about our businesses is, is that we promote a lot within. So I'm sure you may have seen a recent media release that all the people that got promoted basically all came, all, almost all of them started in support on telephones. So, and what we're very strong on is making sure that the great talent that wants to grow and obviously develop, we give them the opportunity to do so. If you want to work on the fringe and be in support and do that well, that's cool too. But we also like to say, okay, we've got great people that have come through, they learn the system through support, they then go in, they might go into a product testing or a BA role, and then they just continue to grow to the point where they can then have had great exposure to many parts of the business and the clients, and then they can be positioned to take on more significant roles. Yeah. And that, that, we love that. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, the final uh, uh, atypical question we ask, uh, Dan, is uh, what about um, looking back, if you could have done one thing differently in your own career or as a leader in the business or, you know, in, in general, just a lesson in business, what would you do over? Yeah, there's so many things that you could do, right? But one of the things that I suppose that we, I mean, we've all done this, right, is that sometimes we, we might drag certain people out when we shouldn't. 
right? And it's not good for them and it's not good for your business. So I suppose being a little bit more proactive in making sure that you've always got the right people on board and not, in a sense, not carrying people that are not aligned to you because it just, it, it affects not only them as individuals, which is hugely important, but it also affects the business and the whole tone and the whole team and the whole culture. 100%. Would you, would you agree that the hardest thing about being a leader as the business grows is making emotionally taxing decisions about people? Always. And, and I always say that if a leader gets to a point where it's easy for them to fire people, then I sort of question their, 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 their emotional intelligence because it's never easy. Because at the end of the day, whenever you've got to deal with people, you're not just dealing with an individual. You're dealing with many of them have got families or they've got partners or they've got spouses or they've got commitments and you know full well what's going on. And it's hard. Yeah, the ripple effect. Yeah, and, and if, you, if it's ever easy, then I sort of question, well, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Yeah. Sometimes it, it, it is easy, right, because there's just a misalignment and you both get to that conclusion. But when one doesn't see it, you see it, and then you're trying to you know, sort of bring it together, say, hey, maybe this is not the best fit, that's hard. Look, for our accountants and bookkeepers out there, which a lot of them watch this, uh, these uh, interviews, um, I feel that a lot of them hang on to dead wood or people that really aren't delivering for them for a very long time. Would you, have you seen that? Yeah, always. And, 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 and the thing is that they're actually good people who bring great value, right? But one of the things that I'm seeing at the moment in the accounting space is self-preservation. And I see this happen all the time where they introduce a great piece of cloud technology, however they revert to using the cloud technology using old desktop methods, right? And um, I think just people have to be a little bit more open to change, embracing change, but at the end of the day, if people aren't moving with the way that the, the, the organisation is wanting to go, I don't think that there's anything more uh, discouraging or uncomfortable than, than that because at the end of the day, they probably don't even want to be there. Yeah. And we do hold on to them because they do do a good job, but at the same time, we've got a business to run, we've got things that we want to achieve, and they either have to come along with it or maybe it's not the right place for them, but that's okay too. And it's really holding them back as well as the business, isn't it? That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's been fantastic, Dan. Thanks for being on the show, mate. No worries. Thank you. Appreciate your time. No worries. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks.